I'm joined now by Democratic Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois, who's a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. And since your colleague wouldn't answer the question, maybe I'll pose it to you. Uh, was it appropriate for him to talk to reporters uh, on background, it appears, uh, to knock down stories when he is the person charged with leading the investigation? Absolutely not. You wouldn't expect that of a judge, would you? Or a, an investigator who is trying to be impartial. And what uh, Congressman Nunez said disqualifies himself, disqualifies him from heading up an investigation in this area. He's already reached a conclusion. And his conclusion is nothing wrong uh, at all. The, the real uh, sin or crime was the leak itself. Uh, no, let's, listen, let's get to the beginning here. Why did they choose the intelligence committees? Why did the Republicans choose the intelligence committees for this investigation? There are a lot of reasons, but one of them is they meet behind closed doors. The public can't see what's happening. You don't know what witnesses are being called. There's no uh, effort or opportunity to test credibility. And if they ever produce a report in some distant time, it's going to be classified. How do you declassify such a report with the permission of the White House? which isn't going to happen. So I am really skeptical as to this being the venue for any investigation. So I've heard of there's a sort of variety of, uh, of different uh, alternatives to the, the two standing investigations happening in the committees that are chaired by these two individuals, Devin Nunes and Richard Burr, uh, one of which floated somewhat surprisingly, I would say, by Daryl Issa Friday night, Republican congressman uh, in the House in California, a special prosecutor. Your thoughts on that? Isn't it interesting that Daryl Issa, who couldn't hold himself back from having weeks and months and years of public investigations of the Obama administration, now doesn't believe in congressional investigations, but wants to have a special prosecutor? Well, certainly we don't want to see Attorney General Sessions, who should recuse himself, being the prosecutor. A special prosecutor may be in order. But why have the Republicans, who couldn't quit on emails in Benghazi, decided now that no public hearing on this Russian involvement in our election is really warranted. What a hoot. Well, let me ask you the follow-up about special prosecutor, because, you know, my sense was there was a kind of consensus in the wake of Ken Starr when, the, when that statute that empowered the special prosecutor was allowed to lapse, a bipartisan consensus that essentially that had created a fundamentally dangerously unaccountable office. Is that still the position of, of you and your colleagues, or is this something that is being kicked around uh, by, by folks on Capitol Hill? We're trying to get to an independent, transparent investigation. I'm co-sponsoring a bill with a number of my colleagues for an independent commission. I've suggested General Colin Powell, uh, a justice uh, uh, from the Supreme Court, former justice of the Supreme Court, that would be part of this. And that's a way to go. But in the alternative, if we're going to look to the Department of Justice, I think we ought to have someone independent. Clearly, Jeff Sessions is not that person. I want to ask you about something Jeff Sessions said today. Uh, he was asked if he knew about contacts in advance. Uh, he said no at a brief walk-in session. He said the FBI and the Justice Department have to remain independent, and they will do so, but not every contact is improper. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, I'd make of it that General Flynn took a trip to Moscow, got paid an honorarium, as I understand it, and had some contacts with the Russians prior to the inauguration of this new president. That could have been perfectly innocent. I don't know. I think let's follow the facts wherever they take us without fear or favor. As we they should say. be clear, Senator. My understanding is that that trip happened in 2015, if I'm not mistaken. I just want to make sure people understand the timeline there. Yes, of course. And that's far in advance of any uh, aspirations of Donald Trump to be president, right. perhaps. But the point I'm getting to is this. Contact in and of itself is not damning or criminal, but it's worth asking the questions, doing the basic investigation. Of course you do that about a person who ends up resigning uh, as national security advisor to the president of the United States. Is there a fundamental, it seems to me that part of the issue here is just there's a sort of breakdown in, in some basic levels of credibility uh, to you and your colleagues with respect to things that emanate from the White House. It seems to me the, the Flynn moment was, was sort of a watershed in that respect in which, you know, numerous people say on the record, including the Vice President of the United States, a sort of categorical denial that's revealed to be not true. Have they repaired that breach of credibility uh, to your mind? No, and I think the problem we have is that less than six weeks into this presidency, I ought to repeat that, less than six weeks into this presidency, this president and this White House have set out to discredit the judiciary, the intelligence agencies of the United States of America, the media, I don't know where to go next. The long list of people that they've attacked just in the first five and a half weeks is an indication that anyone who raises a question about their conduct is in for a tough tweet. 
Do you think that's the motivation? There's some I've seen that essentially have, have, have speculated that, that these attacks and the series of attacks at the various institutions that you just listed have to do with producing doubt against those institutions that might be the ones that produce evidence vis-a-vis -vis the Russia story. And add to that an effort to intimidate, try to put pressure on these agencies, try to put pressure on the media, exclude them from the press conferences. All of this is part of a calculated strategy. Put that pressure and intimidation on them in the hopes that they will lay off. All right, Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Good to be with you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.